Watch you guys. Some of you people wanted to see uh, the ISO that I created yesterday with MSMG Toolkit. And I wanted to see the installation process and what it looks like. What I've done is basically uh, use the MSMG Toolkit ISO and also loaded that up into NT Lite and removed a load more stuff here. So you can see basically what it looks like. Um, and, and you can do more as well. You can actually remove uh, a lot more services and stuff if you want to. After the fact, I've speeded this up a little bit. So I don't think it installs that fast. Uh, but I just wanted to show you uh, generally what it looks like once you get to the desktop. Now, a lot of stuff has been removed from this, which also means you're going to get a lot more better performance. There's less bloatware installed on this Windows 10 version. There's also no telemetry or any of that stuff uh, on this version of Windows 10. It's been sort of basically dampened down. Now, you can add an unattended um, installation to this as well. So you can get a lot of this also automated if you want to with NT Lite. Uh, I didn't do that part of the uh, build. So if I want to do that, I can do that at a later date. You'll probably notice here it's forcing for offline accounts automatically. That's because I've set it up this way in NT Lite rather than using Microsoft account. As you can see, it just goes straight into offline account. You will still need to do uh, these settings here. I can set this up as well, which I'll probably do an unattended uh, installation. But if people wanted this ISO, which I think a few people did, I will upload it uh, somewhere so you can download it and install it if you want to use it. It is Windows 10 Pro 64 bit, so you will need to have a key to activate uh, this version of Windows. Okay, so it's not going to be pre activated, it doesn't work that way. This is a legitimate version of Windows 10, which you will need to activate uh, with a, a legitimate key, which you can purchase. OK, so let's take a look here. So I've got it installed on this virtual machine just for quickness so you can see. And I'm just going to quickly change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. Now, this is not a true reflection of what this actually is going to be like in a real environment. And I will put this onto a real machine so you can see. But basically, I've disabled the search here. I've removed all of the unnecessary programs so they're not installed on here. Uh, Cortana's gone. Uh, the search uh, feature has been removed as well. So you can see this search feature has been removed. I can actually remove this icon in NT Lite as well, which I never did. So I'll probably do that at a later date. Uh, but I can just hide this icon. So the search feature won't work because it's been removed which takes up a lot of resources as well. So you can see here, inside here, you can still get access to a lot of these features. They still do work. There's no error codes coming up or anything like that, as far as I can see here. If you want to look for, for instance, uh, let's just click on File Explorer here. Uh, you can see it's automatically gone to this PC. I've changed all this, so it automatically sets this up. You can also see by closing that off and going to inside the start menu here. Inside here, we can see there is a start area, which has got our settings. You can put an icon on your taskbar if you wish. But basically, this is what you're going to see here. No uh, Cortana, no Windows Defender. All of that has been removed as well. There's no uh, Privacy settings here have all been set up automatically, as you can see, all been removed. So you don't have to keep going in here and setting this up. I have left the camera feature here so you can install your camera software and use your camera because if you're a streamer, you're going to want to do that. The microphone will work also because I've left that enabled, but all the other stuff has been taken out. So you don't have to worry about doing this every single time you install Windows. So that is also done here as well. Now, the problem with creating ISO images like these is the fact that some of these features may be useful to some people. And of course, with me, I've just disabled stuff that I don't want, whereas you may want some of these features. And this is why it's always best to create your own uh, particular type of ISO. That way you can only disable the stuff that you want to do and leave stuff that you want to use on a regular basis enabled. Uh, for me, I've just gone through here and taken out all the stuff that I don't generally use, okay? Now, of course, what my main goal here was is to get this down to really bare essentials 
so that you're getting the best performance and also that the resources is as low as possible and you'll get higher frames per second as well with this particular type of ISO. You can see here, um, I've also gone into this area here. So let me just move action centers all been removed. The people that's all been removed out of here as well. Um, loads of other stuff has been taken out. And as you can see here on the memory, 1.1 out of 9.2 gigabytes uh, is in use and also committed is 1.0 uh, gigabytes so as you can see pretty uh, good memory usage here and this is on a virtual machine remember so if I put this on a real machine it'll probably be better the power buttons all the sleep hibernate and all that has been removed I've just got uh, shut down and restart here all of the unnecessary apps that get installed on the system have also been removed here as well so none of those are going to be available here in this list Inside your settings pane here under account, you can see that we've been forced into the local account, which is good, it means you don't have to set this up. I've also got apps and features here. I've already uh, integrated all the Visual C++, which will be useful for games and other things that you might be using here. All the default apps have been removed here, uh, apart from Internet Explorer, uh, because I know Internet Explorer uh, is definitely still used for some things so i've left that on there you can see here video playback all the applications have been removed here as well so you can use your own applications same thing for other um, programs that have been removed here as well like pictures you can use the older version of photos and stuff now also you may see there's a change in windows updates here i've not completely disabled windows updates i think that's ridiculous everyone needs security updates and what I've done is made it manual so you can do it yourself. But basically, you can see some of the settings are all set all automatically here. So basically, you can control what you want to install uh, and when you want to update. It won't physically install them automatically for you. You can physically click on this and check. You can see also options for quality updates are available. They won't be automatically installed. They'll be there and you can choose whether you want to roll those out or not. I've just clicked on this. If I didn't click on it, they wouldn't download and they wouldn't come down to the PC until you click on there. So you can see here, very simple uh, setup. Uh, again, you can disable these if you wish, but personally, you do want to keep up to date with all your security updates. That's important. So it's important that you keep those updated. Also, let's take a look here um, at some other areas of the actual Windows 10. Uh, which might be useful. You'll see Windows Defender has been removed here. This is just a standard Windows 10 Pro version. All the other versions have been removed. All the WinPE version has been taken out and the recovery version has been removed out of here as well. So it keeps the size nice and small. And again, if you want to put in a control panel here, you're going to see here it's not going to work. The search feature has been taken out. So to get to those features, you will need to uh, go into the tiles and add them to your taskbar or to your desktop or you can just click on the start menu and i'll show you exactly how you get all of that right now all of the sending error uh, reports back and all that stuff has been removed as well all of this stuff has been turned off so everything has been literally disabled and turned off uh, in the best possible way without having loads of error codes popping up if you want to get to your command prompt, uh, control panel, file explorer, all these things, you can get to them in that menu system there. Very simple and easy to do. You can still change all of your settings inside here. And again, this is work in progress. I can uh, mess around with this ISO more and more if I wish. Uh, but personally, there's a point of diminishing return when you start to take too much out and it will start to cause major problems with the operating system. So you don't really want to do that. You want to keep it functional without any sort of errors and problems like that. Otherwise, you're just going to run into major issues when you're using it. Also, right-click context menu here has been changed a little bit. I've got command prompt here instead of PowerShell and a bunch of other things as well. You can see, works out pretty well. It's a nice operating system, nice and smooth, nice and slick, uh, very minimal, uh, not a lot of stuff inside here. Uh, so you don't have to worry about bloat inside this operating system. I've left paint in there. 
Uh, I didn't want to remove that and I didn't want to remove the Internet Explorer. You can right click and remove that from the list if you wish. But personally, uh, it's best to leave some features like that in. Otherwise, they do cause issues when you're using the operating system. Uh, so very bare, minimal uh, operating system for gamers and really ultimate performance. How big is the ISO image? Let me show you here. This was the one 5.48 for the MSMG toolkit and for the NT Lite version. And I think that come in at around about 3.88 gigabytes. Now, the big difference between a Windows 10 Pro Lite version and a Windows 10 Pro version, a standard version, is a lot of the features have been taken out, i.e., you'll get like Windows Defender has been stripped out. You'll get um, Cortana taken out of there. The search feature has been taken out and a bunch of other bits and pieces have been taken out and all these settings have been set in stone. During the installation process, you'll notice that you was forced to install offline mode and not uh, the Microsoft Live account. Also, there's other things like Windows uh, Store has been taken out and a bunch of other things like Xbox and all the other programs that are forced upon you. All your privacy settings have been set uh, with microphone and camera enabled and a bunch of other things like this. So why would you want to install something like this on your system? Well, if you want minimalistic, uh, you know, no telemetry and no bloatware, then something like this will be right up your street. But if you're looking for a Windows 10 Pro version that's super light, that has certain features still installed on it, the only way you're going to get that is by creating your own. It's always best to create your own Windows 10 Lite version. That way you can choose what to remove and what to keep. And also it's safe because you know exactly what's in that ISO. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. I just want to say a really big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Hope this video helps you out. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Give me a bit of time and I'll get this uh, ISO uploaded if you want to take a look at it. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.